Hi everyone, in this video we'll talk about the sodium reabsorption in the proximal tubule. Normally about 60 to 65 percent of the filtered sodium is reabsorbed in the proximal tubule. Sodium reabsorption in the proximal tubule mainly occurs by antiport mechanism and uh, antiport mechanism means the substances are exchanged in opposite direction. Now the key element uh, for the transport via antiport mechanism is the sodium potassium ATPase uh, pump which pumps sodium into the interstitium and lowers the intracellular sodium concentration. And uh, across the epical membrane, sodium moves down the electrochemical gradient and the entry of sodium is mediated by the sodium hydrogen antiporter. Sodium movement inside the cell occurs in exchange with hydrogen movement into the tubular lumen, so also called as the sodium hydrogen exchanger. Now the hydrogen inside the cell is generated from carbon dioxide and water and the reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme carbonic anhydrase. This reaction also generates bicarbonate. Now the hydrogen which is secreted into the tubular lumen is, is combining with the filtered bicarbonate and uh, it forms carbon dioxide and water in the presence of the enzyme carbonic anhydrase. Carbon dioxide diffuses into the cell. Bicarbonate which is generated in the cell is reabsorbed into the blood with sodium bicarbonate co-transporter. Sodium also moves through the sodium potassium ATPS pump and uh, reaches the interstitium or it is reabsorbed. The chloride movement occurs through the antiport uh, with the organic base and chloride moves out into the interstitium through the chloride channels which are present on the vasolateral membrane. Chloride also moves paracellularly in the proximal tubule. Sodium reabsorption in the proximal tubule also occurs by symport mechanisms. When I say symport, the substances are moving in same directions. And uh, the sodium potassium ATPS pump is the driving force which is present on the basolateral membrane and it lowers the intracellular sodium concentration. And uh, this creates a concentration gradient between the lumen and the intracellular or inside the cell and for sodium and sodium moves through the sodium glucose symporter which is present on the luminal membrane. This symporter will transport both sodium and glucose inside the cell and it is also called as SGL team. Sodium can also move through uh, other symporter proteins like sodium amino acids, sodium phosphate and sodium organic acids. So glucose, amino acids, phosphate and organic acids are reabsorbed along with sodium by the symporter proteins which are present on the luminal membrane and are different for different molecules. Sodium is actively transported into the interstitium through the sodium potassium ATPS pump which is present on the basolateral membrane. Certain drugs which are not easily reabsorbed in the proximal tubule can act as osmotic diuretic and few examples include urea, mannitol and sucrose. Certain diseases where excess solutes fail to be reabsorbed from the tubular fluid like in uncontrolled diabetes mellitus. Like if you take uh, the uncontrolled diabetes mellitus where the plasma glucose concentration is high and this will increase the filtered load of glucose which will exceed the tubular maximum of glucose. So glucose is not completely reabsorbed. In this situation, there will be marked increase in the osmotically active particles in the tubular lumen. Either it is the drugs which are not reabsorbed or the failure of glucose reabsorption, it will increase uh, the osmotically active particles in the tubular lumen. Now, if uh, these are increased in the tubular lumen, the result is osmotic diuresis and this is because of the increased osmotic pressure in the tubular lumen which reduces the water reabsorption causing diuresis. 
certain uh, drugs um, like carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, like drugs which inhibit the enzyme carbonic anhydrase, they also act as an osmotic diuretic. These drugs are used in the treatment of glaucoma and in acute uh, altitude sickness. We know car carbonic anhydrase enzyme is critical for the reabsorption of bicarbonate, reabsorption of sodium and also for the secretion of hydrogen ion in the proximal tubule. Carbonic anhydrase uh, inhibitor reduces the intracellular bicarbonate and intracellular hydrogen ion concentration. So we know hydrogen secretion, bicarbonate reabsorption in the proximal tubule are coupled to sodium reabsorption. So the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, they cause decrease in the bicarbonate reabsorption and decrease in sodium reabsorption. So filtered bicarbonate and sodium remain in the tubular lumen and the result is diuresis. So they act as an osmotic diuretic. Thank you for watching. Please uh, subscribe to my channel, Simple Concepts in Medical Physiology for more videos.